So the next topic we want to discuss is basically how can companies choose which target market to serve, or in other words, which type of consumers to serve. So we learned about consumer behavior, and we understand that some consumers behave differently than others. So today we're going to talk about segmentation. So what is segmentation? Segmentation is when we take the market that has all the consumers and divide it into sub areas. For example, we have segment one, and segment one share their needs, let's say, for a shampoo. So all of them want to have a shampoo that is anti-dandruff. Segment two, on the other hand, buy shampoo for different reasons. They want their hair to be nice and shiny. So although both of them are in the need to buy a hair product, a shampoo in this case, the needs that come from using a shampoo are different. One segment wants to be anti-dandruff. The other segment wants to have a shiny hair. Now, one of the main things we need to understand is that segments, two different segments, can never have the same needs. If they have the same needs, then the way we segmented the market is wrong. So we always need to make sure that all the people in the segment have the same needs for the specific product, and all the people that are not in the segment have different needs or might not need the product altogether. So market segmentation then means that we divide the market into distinct groups which will require separate marketing mixes. And that is another um, issue we want to remember. For each segment, we have to create their own marketing plan, their own four Ps, their own strategy. Target marketing is when I decide to choose, well, which group should I appeal to? Because obviously I cannot appeal to all the segments in the market. And then market positioning is when I create a very clear and distinct position in the consumer's mind relative to competition. For example, Volvo is positioned as being very high on safety. Geico, very high on low price. Now, we will discuss these terms later on, but it's important that we understand what they mean. Positioning strategy is when we select then a specific key theme in order to communicate to the target market. And marketing strategy basically is a consequence of, that comes from all of these STP, segmentation, targeting, and positioning. So basically, the two questions we want to answer is the who and the how. So we want to understand how will we decide how the needs change based on the product that we have, which is called segmentation. Then we want to understand, well, out of these segments, which target market, which set of consumers would our product serve? And that will depend on our SWOT analysis, situation analysis, and consumer behavior. Then once we decide on the target market, we need to understand, well, how are we different than competition? And what can we position our product to enhance our strength and reduce our weakness? And by doing so, we can actually create value to our target customers. So then, how do we decide how to pick the target market? So there are a few criteria that we want to make sure our target market has. And by doing so, it probably will guarantee that this is a good choice. So the first criteria is profitable. Obviously, we want to make sure that we can offer that target market a product with a price that will bring us profit. So if we are going with high price because we have high cost, our target market should have the financial means to pay for the cost that we have. The other thing is we want to make sure that this profitability is also sustainable over time, meaning that the chance of another competitor targeting this audience with a cheaper price is not as high as if we didn't target this market. The other uh, criteria is if this target market is measurable. Can I actually do marketing research and see 
that this target market is profitable? Can I access those people? So this will be the third one, accessibility. For example, let's say that I find that I have a nice niche, a nice segment in Alaska. But unfortunately, my distribution doesn't go so far, or my products are not durable, and it's difficult for me to ship them long distances. So the fact that I have a target market or a segment that want my product, but I cannot access, makes that target market not beneficial for my company. Then we also want to make sure that the segment is homogeneous. And this is what I discussed about the fact that the people within the segment must have similar needs. So they all need to buy the product for the same reason. Because again, if I have a segment that is not homogeneous and there are more than a few needs within that segment for one type of product, then I have to resegment it again. And finally, the mutually exclusive, meaning that two segments cannot share the same needs. So the homogeneous and the mutually exclusive are probably the two most important criteria when we choose a target market, and then accessibility, measurability, and obviously profitability. So how do we decide how to segment the market? Basically, you can segment the market on any way you want. However, these are like the typical basis of segmentation that marketers use. And we will go one by one to explain what they are. So the first one is geographic segmentation. Geographic segmentation, as you can understand from the name, is when the market needs emerge from the lo geographical location. So for example, if you live in a cold weather, or you live in an urban terrain as compared to rural terrain. And the idea is that you divide the market based on the idea that people who live, let's say, in rural areas will have the same needs when it comes to your product as compared to people who live in urban areas. For example, take a car. People who live in an urban area might want a car that's smaller and easier to park, while maybe people who live in urban, in, uh, urban areas rural areas, sorry, might want a truck or a bigger car that can go over terrains that might not be as easy or as developed as they are in the urban um, environment. Now, usually, the way we decide if we want to do geographical segmentation will depend on that the needs have to come from a geographical location. So, for example, if I'm having air conditions, then obviously it will be affected, the need will be affected on what weather um, they have within that area. Um, and the same as we said with the car. What terrain do I have? I really don't need a big USV or a big truck if I'm only going on plateau and very smooth roads. And the other thing is that the general pattern of consumption might be affected by why, what we call social or cultural environment like maybe political views or ethnic flavors. Now here it's not directly related to the geographical location, but occasionally it happens that subcultures are concentrated within a geographical location. So for example, let's say in Florida, there's a more concentration of Hispanic population that might maybe like potato chips that are more spicy as compared to maybe the East Coast. So we might divide the United States based on what types of flavors of potato chips will sell, based on the geographical location, even though obviously it's not because Florida causes people to like spicy food, but because of the demographic concentration of the people who live in that geographical area. Demographic segmentation is usually one of the top ways that marketers like to segment. One of the main reasons is because it's the easiest after geographical segmentation that marketers can do. We don't really need the cooperation of a consumer in order to do demographic segmentation. We can look at the consumer and we can see in general what the gender is, what the age is, if they're married or not. We don't really have to ask a lot of questions. So it's a very easy segmentation to do and before the internet, before we had social media and Google with all the data that comes with um, Google, um, that was the basic, most popular segmentation that marketers did. And as you can see, it comes from demographics. 
Meaning that the reason, let's say, you would like one type of vacation versus another is because of your age. Or you would like one type of products versus another. For, for example, razor blades would be because of your gender and so forth. So those are needs that emerge because of your demographic um, characteristics and not because other types of characteristics. Now, psychographic and lifestyle segmentation is probably today the most used. And the reason I say again today is because it's probably the most accurate way of segmenting the market. Because as you remember for motivation, personality, and psychological factors affects our buyer behavior and hence our motivation. So usually a lot of the needs that we have for products will emerge from our lifestyle. However, in the old days, before we had the internet, it was almost impossible to pick up on psychographic characteristics because you actually had to do a marketing research where you actually had to distribute surveys and collect consumer insights. Today, because we have Google, companies can actually buy data that shows how people buy and behave online without those people even knowing that that information is being taken. Now, it doesn't mean that someone knows, let's say, that Tamar of Net has bought uh, two pants on Gap and then she went and bought a pair of boots, but they do know that someone who has my demographics and that like well, my kind of lifestyle, my kind of hobbies, bought that and bought that. So this is what we mean by Google giving data to companies. So segmenting by psychographics means that we divide the market or the population into groups that the reason they have similar needs comes from their psychological characteristics, their values, and their lifestyle. So personality, maybe they like the same things or they like the same values. For example, today there are many companies who have what we call a social component to the purchase. Tom's Shoes, for example, offers that for every pair of shoes that you buy, they donate another pair of shoes to people in South America. So if I'm a person who wants to also donate to society, I might want to buy Tom's shoes, not necessarily because of the look, but because of what it symbolizes. If there's another consumer who buys the product exactly for the same reason, that has to do with our personality. Lifestyle will be in the sense of how people live their daily life. Um, it can be a job, it can be consumer activities, it can be like surfing, like the picture that we see. People who like to golf, people who like to watch sports. So those people will all share, let's say, maybe the need for a smart TV that also has ESPN or maybe also shows satellite uh, programs from other countries, not necessarily the United States. And then we have segmentation by behavior. Segmentation by behavior is the idea that you segment the market basically based on their buyer behavior. So one of it can be if they're loyal or not. So for example, there's a lot of ways that companies like to reward consumers that are loyal and give them different prices or even different products as compared to first-time consumers. Airlines are actually very uh, popular or known in using loyalty and segmenting by behavior. You get a lot of different products and a lot of different service treatments if you're loyal versus if you're not. In addition, it will depend on the type of benefits that you get from the product. So there's people who are more sensitive to texture than others, for example. Some people will buy clothing because they're very comfortable or they're very soft or they want only organic or natural material. So that will also be segmentation by behavior. Some will be based on fashion, stylish look. But again, it depends on what they consider as fashion. So again, this will be by behavior, the trend of the cool. Some people are worried about um, allergies or about the environment. So that again will be segmentation by behavior and so forth. And then we have usage situation. That means when the person will use the product. So for example, NyQuil 
actually have in a lot of other cold medication, they have daytime and they have nighttime. So for the nighttime, you might want something that will help you to sleep. And for the daytime, you want something that will not make you groggy because you need to function. So that will be segmentation by usage. Um, Johnson & Johnson will be segmentation by the situation and by the usage. If you need to use it for a baby, you will buy Johnson & Johnson shampoo. Johnson & Johnson, a few years ago, tried to actually expand to the segment of mothers, meaning adults. They were trying to sell them shampoo and conditioner and body lotion to mothers because mothers trust the brand. However, the brand is so strongly associated with being used only on babies, mothers did not want to use the same product as their babies. So sometimes the fact that you position yourself very strongly on a specific benefit can actually backfire. So yeah, Johnson & Johnson are number one in baby products and head and shoulders are number one in anti-dandruff, but it's very difficult for both of them to expand outside of those specific usage pattern. And then we had benefit segmentation. And we mentioned it a little bit before when we were talking about the cars. So benefit segmentation would be all the people that buy cars because of style, all the people who buy cars because it's safe, all the people who buy cars because of the fuel economy. So that means that you buy a product for a very specific benefit. And hence, you and the rest of the consumers who like that benefit will be part of that segment. And this is just another good example of how a company does segmentation by benefits. The toothpaste market is very much known as well as the um, uh, detergent market. So here, this is an example of Crest. So you have different toothpaste all made by Crest. One talks about the benefit of cavity prevention. So if you care about that, you will buy that toothpaste. Other talks about whitening. Another talks about tartar control and so forth. And the idea here is to segment the market based on benefits. And in this case, they actually cover all the market. So they actually pick all of those as their target market, offering each and every um, consumer market the benefit that they like the most. <laughs>